On this episode, come along with me as I demonstrate how to acquire flight following if you do not have a transponder aboard your aircraft. Information not available. On January 1st, 2020, the ADSB, or Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast System, became mandatory for aircraft operating in any airspace that requires a Mode C transponder. There are still some aircraft that never were originally certified with an electrical system or a transponder. Betsy, my 1946 Luscom 8E, is one of them. Watch as I demonstrate how to acquire radar services and flight following utilizing primary radar from ATC. We go out here and do a run up. Winds calm, we'll take off on two. It's the closest runway. There's nobody in a traffic pattern. All right, flight controls are free in, correct. Car, Pete. Hey, there we go. Probably in a lot. Alright, four takeoff checklist is complete. Final's clear. Temple traffic, Luscom 72037 is departing runway 2, Temple. Alright, beautiful morning. Here we go. Clear left, right. Alright, here we go. Power's coming in. Stick in the gut. On the runway center line. Get power all the way in there, relax the back pressure, go to neutral. Allow the tail to lift on its own. It's coming up, tail is off the ground, and we'll just glue back pressure, she'll just fly right off. Not a big deal. All the instrument indications look good. Traffic, Luscom 72037, turn a left crosswind, runway 2, Temple. Temple traffic, Luscom 72037, departing to pattern to the west, Temple. Beautiful morning fly. Oh, those lakes look glassy, too. In the modern age, we mostly have transponders on all general aviation aircraft. As you can see on this panel here, we have no transponder. There are still quite a bit of airplanes out there that have electrical systems that don't have a uh, mode C transponder. And uh, this is one of them. Collision avoidance is detrimental. And a beautiful morning like this is a great time for a collision to occur. Believe it or not, there is actually a way to get flight following without a mode C transponder. ATC has two radars. They have the primary, which picks up the actual metallic object that is flying through the air, and then they have the secondary radar, which is what sends the signal to the transponder when you see that response, that reply light, what that is is the secondary radar interrogating the secondary, uh, the, the transponder. If ATC isn't too busy and they have time, they actually can still identify you with the primary target. So right now on the scope, all they would see is 
the metallic object of the airframe on their primary radar scope. They wouldn't see a number, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to call up Gray Approach. We'll get, give them the wake up call, then we'll say request. Initially, they probably will try to give me a squawk. If they do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell a negative transponder, and I'm going to ask my, uh, state my request. Then most likely, they'll ask me for my position, all that sort of stuff. Then they'll have me do, they may have me do a turn, they may have me report some sort of information. So let's give them a call real quick, and let's just see what they're going to do. Good morning, Gray Approach, Luscombe 72037. 72037, Gray Approach. Yes, sir. I am negative transponder equipped. I am currently 2,500, six miles southwest of Temple, and I have a request. 72037, Yes, sir. If possible, and able to identify me via primary radar, I'd like to get flight following at 2,500 to burn it. Get my altitude right. Uh, I'm currently 2,500. Roger. Uh, kind of showing you. Uh, you need to turn left uh, 30 degrees. Let me try to radar identify. All right, left 30 degrees. Clear left. So right now we're on a heading of 230. I'm going to turn a heading of 200 left. So they're going to identify me. He he can see me. You just got to make sure it's me that he's looking at. There's 30 degrees. And let's see what he comes back with. All right, 72037, uh, radar contact seven miles to the uh, southeast of Temple. Understand you're reported out to 2,500. Uh, just advise you to change the altitude and uh, give you flight falling all the way down to Burnett. All right, so we're at 2,500. We'll proceed to Burnett. And actually, I'm going to climb to 4,500 for Luscombe, 72037. 37, Roger, arrived on your level at uh, 4,500 and your 30 degree, degree turn was observed. 72037, climbing now from 2,500 to 4,500. So, he saw me on radar, but to make sure that he was looking at the... What type are you? Uh, say again for 72037. What type aircraft are you again? I'm a Luscom 8E. The identifier would be an L8 Echo. Lima 8 Echo. Lima 8 Echo, Roger. Just port a step set on 4,500. We'll go for 037. So he, he doesn't have a transponder reply from me. But what he's getting is just a metallic object in the sky. And he had to make sure that he was painting with the primary rare was the correct one. And that's how he did it by giving me a 30 degree turn and he observed it. He was able to positively identify me as the target he was looking at. So I'll have to give him all my altitude reporting. But you know it's it's it is it's a really neat little feature that people don't think of. And I tell all my students always, always, always use flight following when it's available. There's a lot of times where it's not available. But collision avoidance is key and detrimental. I mean, yeah, we got four flight with the Stratus input to show our ads B aircraft out there. And I think something else that's really important, you got all these tools to help you see and avoid traffic. You've got flight following, you got the Stratus input for ads B. These right here are your best collision avoidance tools. And the FAA mandates it. You see and avoid all traffic. I just figured it'd be really good to show that this feature is available. Just because you don't have a transponder doesn't mean you can't get flight following. Now, if if the approach facility is too busy, they're not going to be able to give you the service. Because it takes them time to look at the radar, figure out which target they're talking about. And if their radar screen is cluttered, it might be a challenge. So. You may or may not be able to ever get this feature, depending on how busy your airspace is. But if it's available, try it. Just try it as a feature that you might use. In Most of your mid-air collisions do not occur 
when the weather's crappy. Most of your mid-air collisions occur when it's clear, blue, and 22, and beautiful, because everybody's out flying, everybody gets complacent, because it's a beautiful day to fly. 4,500 leveling off, gonna let the airplane accelerate first, and pull the power back. All right, now we're cruising. Majority of general aviation aircraft do indeed have a transponder. So in most cases, you will never have to deal with a circumstance requiring you to talk to ATC without a transponder. But I simply wanted to show another way and technique to acquire that second set of eyes to help aid in collision avoidance. Join me next episode as we take to the sky and discuss some of the unique characteristics of a Cessna 337 Skymaster. Until next week, fly safe, keep learning, and never give up on a dream. So long.